Philadelphia Jacksonville, we are glad you are with us. The Jaguars and the Titans, Saturday night, 8-15. Of course, you'll hear the game right here on 1010XL. The winner is the AFC South division champion. Let's go talk to a man that I discovered after the first Jaguar-Titan game a couple of weeks ago. He hosts the Two-Tone Talk Titan podcast. You find it on YouTube and Twitter. His name is Brad Steele, and he's kind enough to join us here on 1010XL. Brad, how we doing, man? Doing well, man. I appreciate you having me on. Brad, thank you for the time, and I'll be honest, man. I told you this when uh, you and I talked. I kind of uh, sabotaged the comments in one of your uh, podcasts there, but I got <laughs> such a kick. You, I discovered you on a Jaguar fan page about four weeks ago after the Jaguars went to Nashville and, quite frankly, put it on your Tennessee Titans, and you were sitting in your car, and, man, you just went off for, like, 15 (laughs) minutes on Todd Downing, the Titans' offensive coordinator, the play calling, the the lack of energy. You were fired up, and it got a lot of Jaguar fans here laughing a little bit, but clearly, (laughs) as a Titan fan, six losses in a row, it looks like it's wearing on you guys a little bit. Yeah, man, especially, you know, I I talk about this nearly every week on the show, but, you know, to consider that the Titans were seven and three at one at one point. And if you remember, they had a Thursday night game against the Packers um, and they looked really good in that game. And uh, they were seven and three and had such a comfortable lead in the AFC South that it was like, you know, we're setting pretty, you know, we're. We're in a pretty good spot, and uh, pretty much the the snowball started rolling downhill after that. It's a very unusual situation to have been in a place where you felt like it was just a done deal to – and credit to the Jags, too, for coming along the way they have. I mean, were, were they uh, – they were two and six at one point. Yeah, two and six season. and then three and seven, yeah. Yeah, and so you kind of feel like at that point it's like, okay, so the Jags aren't quite there yet. You know, they're they're probably another year or two away. The Colts are laughably bad after being so hyped up in the in the offseason. So it's it's like, okay, we're we're good. And then to to see, you know, just the disaster that has followed is uh so I feel like you've had two seasons in one here. You know, it's all about perspective. And one of the things I thought was interesting about your podcast, and I told you, man, I think you do a good job with that, even though it's a Titans podcast, I can appreciate a good podcast host. Um, you know, the six losses in a row. Well, I mean, Brad, welcome to our world. We've been off here in Jacksonville 14 out of 15 years. And, and right. to see the reaction in Nashville about six losses in a row, and, and I saw that some people on your podcast were like, well, maybe we don't even want to win Saturday night so we can get a better draft pick. That's crazy yeah. to me that some fans up there do not want to win the AFC South. It's, dude, I, don't even give me, I, I know we got to keep this time limited, so I don't want to get too far into it because well, I could go for an hour about this, but I have a Twitter account for Two-Tone Talk, and that's kind of where I air my grievances about all things Titans and all things football, but um, I, I'm baffled myself that, you know, you're, there are some teams who would give anything to be in a position to win their division in the last week of the season. I know the Titans have lost six straight and it's been a tough month and a half, but like at the end of the day, you've still got it right here in front of you. And it's baffling to me that you have fans that would rather take a shot at an offensive tackle in the first, you know, round of the top 10 of the first round than try to go to the playoffs. It's like, are, are you, I, I can't even believe some of the, I can't even call them hot takes that I'm seeing from Titans fans on Twitter. I, it's more so just lunacy to me. Like, this is the playoffs. And you and you know as well as I do, because the Jaguars found themselves in an AFC championship game years ago that nobody would have predicted them to make it to. Like, you got to get in and then anything could happen. Like, it's the playoffs. You just got to be better than another team one night. And so it's baffling to me to see fans that would rather play for a draft spot. Unbelievable. Brad Steele is the host of the Two-Tone Talk Titan podcast. He's with us here on 1010XL in Jacksonville. 
Brad Josh Dobbs is going to get the start Saturday night. Your oh, thoughts? <laughs> well, you know, I, I hate to see the injury to Ryan Tannehill. He is, you know, we, we know that Ryan Tannehill, he's not – He's not Patrick Mahomes. He's not Josh Allen, but he's he's put together a pretty good little career with the Titans, and so I hated to see him go down. Um, I think a lot of Titans fans are having high hopes that Malik Willis can eventually be something. The fact of the matter is he's not now, um, and that's you know it's not to say that you should abandon all hope if you want him to be good, but right now he's not. He's not good enough to be in this position, and um, Josh Dobbs in his one game that he's played against the Cowboys last week with a lot of starters out, I thought that he looked a lot more capable of manning the ship than Malik does right now. And uh, Josh Dobbs is a guy I haven't even thought about since his days with the Tennessee Volunteers um, in college. But He actually had uh, a cup of coffee here in Jacksonville for a few games. Right, he's He's had a cup of coffee with a few teams, Steelers, Browns, uh, the Lions, who was with when the Titans picked him up. So, um, you know, he, he looks like if, if you've got to choose between the two, I think he is the right choice. Um, just because of his experience and being in the league a while, I think you would rather have him in there than a rookie who's just not ready yet. I think Malik has proven that. And um, so I think he is their best bet at this point. Um, and you know, you, of course, as a Titans fan, I'm excited for him to, you know, get an opportunity. I don't think he's the quarterback of the future, but if he does well enough, I mean, you're looking at, you know, you can land on the roster, you know, next year and, and beyond as a, as a good backup. So, um, he, he is the right choice at this given time for them uh, over Malik and, uh, I'm not a big believer in the fact that, you know, Titans fans say this is going to ruin Malik's confidence to to be benched like this and it's like man if getting benched your rookie year when you're clearly not ready is going to ruin this guy then he needs to find another line of work because it's like it's and excuse my dog back there he agrees with me he's barking in the background he's 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 barking in agreement but you know it's like he'll be fine with you know getting benched he's you know he's a little stronger mentally than that surely um so, yeah, I, th- I think Dobbs is the better choice to to go right now. A couple of more for Brad Steele, host of the Two-Tone Talk Titan podcast. You can find it on YouTube, and you can find it on Twitter at Two-Tone Talk. All right, so real quick, as far as the Jaguars go, and it was funny, and I wasn't really, when I was in your comments on your podcast, that's not a true, I mean, that's that is a true story. That's not make believe I wasn't doing that for radio shtick. I was literally Absolutely. watching Brad's Absolutely. podcast and commenting as he went along. Um, yes. And you didn't know that I was a radio host in Jacksonville until I told you. So that was kind of funny too. Uh, but but yeah. I, I was serious in the fact that Jaguar fans look at this as maybe payback time for 1999. And, and you, um, you know, how basically asked me, how long are you going to hold a grudge? And I'm curious <laughs> from the Titans perspective, do you know what you guys are considered down here? I mean, I know it hasn't been the greatest rivalry because Jacksonville hasn't held up their end of the bargain, but you could argue that game in January of 2000 killed the first decade of the Jacksonville Jaguars. They were not the same after that for about five years, and they've only had – this will be their second win-or-go-home scenario playoff-style game since that day in January 2000. And Jaguar fans are looking at this game on Saturday night as maybe not payback, but maybe a turning of the chapter now with Trevor Lawrence and this young team. Is there a thought in Tennessee, a fear in Tennessee that, oh boy, Trevor Lawrence, this team looks pretty good, Doug Peterson, this could be the start of something in Jacksonville? Well, I first of all want to say when you left the comment about this is revenge for 99, in my, I didn't say it on the podcast, but in my mind, I was like, I'm dealing with like a Jags historian. Like, <laughs> this is a Jags fan. And so then when you told me you, you hosted the, the radio show, I was like, that makes a lot of sense. Because like, to, for somebody, because, you know, of course, on Twitter and YouTube, you deal with a lot of fans who have come along since then. And so they're they're thinking about other things, but like I was like ninety nine, I was like we're going back. But when you put it like that, I mean, absolutely, I, I can see 
the fans who have been around for a while, like you and I have, obviously, you know, absolutely. That's how the Titans viewed um, the Ravens for so long. It's it's like, man, we what if what if we hadn't had to, you know, have those games with the Ravens where you know they they kind of ruined us. So when you put it like that, I definitely relate. As far as the way the Jags look now, when the season started this year. And I saw the Colts were not as good as they were going to be. And the Texans are obviously horrible right now. I I told a good buddy of mine, we go eat dinner every week and we just talk football over dinner. And uh, I told him, I said, man, I said, I'm worried about the Jags. I said, I'm, I'm worried. And this was like first month of the season. I was like, I'm worried about the Jags, man. I'm, you know, because they, had, I think it was the Chargers. They had gone and played them and just smoked them. Yeah, beat them 38-10 you know, out in L.A. Yeah. Yeah, so I was like, they're the ones I'm worried about. Well, then you guys, you know, you kind of went on that losing streak and it was like, okay, well, never mind. You know, like I said earlier, it got to a point where the Titans were so comfortably ahead that it was like, okay, well, the AFC South's just not good right now. And then when things started turning around and when the Jags beat the Titans, I was I felt like I was one of the only ones who went on social media or whatever and was like, hey, they're not that far behind. Like, I need you guys to understand this is getting interesting here. And a lot of fans were just like, no, don't worry about it. And I was like, I was like, am I crazy? Like, am I the, am I the one here that's just being overly negative? And I'm like, all right, guys, they're, now they're one game back. Now we're tied. Um, and then we're at this point we're at now. But, of course, I, I look at Trevor Lawrence – and he's, you know, he is blossoming now into what they said he was going to be in the draft. You know, if you remember when he was drafted, it was like, this is the best quarterback prospect that we've ever seen, you know. And um, he's starting to come into his own big time. Um, Travis Etienne, you know, obviously he dealt with a ton of injury in his first year. So, so now he's kind of... Uh, coming along really well. I saw the game he had against Houston Sunday. He was just a monster game. And, uh, you know, Zay Jones, Evan Ingram, these are guys who have really come along. And Doug Peterson, who, you know, has had a lot of success in the NFL. So, yeah, I think as a Titans fan and, for that matter, Colts and Texans fans as well, you know, they sit back and look at this and they're like, oh, boy, you know, we we may be dealing with this guy for a while and it's his only his second year in the league. Right. So yeah, we probably will be dealing with him for a while. And, um, and then God help us if, if Houston drafts Bryce young and he ends up being, you know, what he could be, this, this may be tough times ahead. You know what I'm saying? But as far as the Jacks though, yeah, it's, it's something that I've been worried about all season came to fruition. And now I'll be worried about it next year and the next year and the next year too. So Hey, Brad, as we wrap up, man, final question. Again, appreciate you joining us. Uh, hopefully there's a great ball game on Saturday night. We certainly hope we win. I know you believe the same and may the best team win. Uh, my, my question, you know, is this, looking at this game, and I've been warning people here in Jacksonville all week, Tennessee's wounded. They've lost six in a row. Josh Dobbs was on the Lions practice squad two and a half weeks ago. I get all that. Maybe it's the logo, the voodoo of that logo. Maybe I'm worried that Eddie George and Frank Wycheck and Keith Bullock and Blaine Bishop are going to come out onto that field. But I've had horror those are some stories. Names. Man, those are some names I love. Right I'm there. sure you do. I've had horror stories with your with your franchise and doing things to the Jaguars. Yeah. What is the thought on the opposite end? Do Tennessee fans, even with Dobbs, believe they're going to come in here on Saturday night and believe they're going to win the game? Um, it depends which fans you ask. I mean, it's like I said earlier, there are some who are saying they want to lose to get a better draft spot, which like you said, and I agree, it's ludicrous, but um, you know, there are some fans who, you know, they can, they can make themselves believe anything. And, and I think that Dobbs probably played well enough against Dallas to where it's like, okay, you know, this guy can do something. He may not be, you know, the second coming of Joe Montana, but he can do something. And the Titans, you know, I hated the fact that they had to rest so many guys for that Cowboys game because I'm not a fan of that, man. Maybe I'm old school, but, like, I want to see – I want to see you try to win, you know. And I'm not saying they were trying to lose, but they sure weren't trying to win either. 
And I hate that, but they, you know, Tennessee has just for two years now been a hospital. Um, just so many injuries. I think if the Titans have a calling card, and here's another one of those names that'll probably make you cringe. I, I think Derrick Henry's the calling card. It's like, you know, he's had a week off. He's going to be on fresh legs. He is behind one of the worst offensive lines I've ever seen. But, you know, that's you kind of live and die by him. That's kind of the Titans mantra, especially this year with, uh, you know, the offensive coordinator not being good, offensive line not being good. Outside of Traylon Burks, your talent outside is not particularly great. It's kind of like we're going to live and die by number 22, and hopefully Dobbs can do enough to compliment him. And the Titans' defense overall usually plays tough, and they play well. Their worst game of the year probably was against Jacksonville. Um, so that's probably not a good omen. But, um, you know, so I think that's kind of your hope if you're a Titans fan is, is Derrick Henry and the defense, which is what it's been for years. I mean, let's be honest. That's a Mike Vrabel-type mentality. We're going to run the ball. We're going to play good defense. And we're going to, you know, hope that that's enough to win. And we're going to ask our quarterback to just game manage. Um, I think it's really all you can do in the situation they're in at quarterback. So, um, yeah, I think that's for the Titans fans that are going in hopeful Saturday night. That's why is be, because of the running back and, and the defense. If you want to check out what they're talking about with the Tennessee Titans, Brad Steele is the host of the Two-Tone Talk Titan podcast. Just search for that on YouTube, search for that on Twitter, wherever you get your podcasts. And it's an interesting perspective to see what the other fan base is talking about leading into this game on Saturday night. Brad, appreciate the time, man. Best of luck to the Titans every uh, time, except the two times they play Jacksonville. Of course, we hope for the best game on Saturday night, and we'll do it again uh, this offseason, man. We'll see how the Titans are faring in free agency and getting ready for the draft. I appreciate you, man. Thanks for having me on. And thank you to my buddy Brad Steele, the host of the Two-Tone Talk Titan podcast. Looking to be friends with some Titan fans, some Titan, you know, media types. It's okay. We can break bread, obviously. We'll have some differences come Saturday night around 8.15.